Hello and welcome to the Not Megan Guardian TV. My name is Solomon Forward and get ready to get your world rocked with top notch analysis and up to the minute details of everything from Europe's top leagues. I'm not alone in the studio. I've got Solis Truco with me, who is probably everybody's favorite writer on this show. How's it going, Solis? It's going well, thank you very much. Solomon. Yeah, so after about three months that we didn't have the Premier League, I know there were a couple of football feelers all around, if I can call it that. But how does it feel getting the, um, well, overbloated to some extent, um, Premier League back um, into people's eyes? Uh, I think it's, you know, it's really something to look forward to. Through the summer, we had a couple of football competitions to tide us over, but um, despite the prestige that comes with the AFCON and uh, the Copa America, we all know that the pinnacle of football today is club football in Europe. So having the Premier League back is a very welcome development. Well, yeah, let's just go into the meat of the matter. City are going into this as defending champions after winning the domestic trouble that was last season. And also, just on Sunday, they won the Community Shield. Do, 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 do you think that they're going to be winning the title again going into this season? I think they've really laid down a marker um, by winning the Community Shield, even though they did that in somewhat nervy fashion, requiring penalties against Liverpool. But um, watching City, you really get the sense of just how hard it is for anyone to wrest that title off of them. This is a team that is complete in every respect and who are forward thinking in that they take steps to address their weaknesses mm -hmm. before those weaknesses become truly um, deleterious to their um, ambitions for the season. So I think they come into this term as real front runners in the title. Um, okay, who, who, who do you think is going to be running them close if, if they're going to still be the front runners in this? I think we'll have the same situation we had last season with um, Liverpool being their closest. Uh, challengers, but uh, I think Guardiola's side are really on a tier, not just in terms of the Premier League now, but mm -hmm. historically, this is um, they're in, in an argument for some of the, one of the best sides in the Premier League in history. So I, I think they are going to put up really record-breaking numbers again. Really? Yes. Uh, and, interesting. Yeah, and, and Liverpool are going to run them close, but it's still going to. They're still going to come a bit short. I know the difference between the City side of this season, or the City side we're going to be seeing this season and last season when we're talking about personnel, is probably the fact that um, um, Rodri is going to be joining this side. Do you think he holds uh, much of an importance in that side? Do you think he's going to be um, improving the, the, the stakes when it comes to City getting the Premier League title? Uh, it's, it's a hard ask, really, for anyone okay. to improve this City side, I think. It's, it's really more of a succession thing with Fernandinho um, not having age on his side, even though as we saw last season when he was available to play, there was no significant drop off in his performances okay. um, with Manchester City. I think really when you look at it, the real loss for Manchester City coming into this season and where there has not really been a significant upgrade or replacement is the loss of Vincent Kompany. Uh, mm. Last season, we saw toward the end that Guardiola trusted him more and more okay. as the season got into the really nervy moments at the end. And he's a big influence on the team in terms of leadership and in terms of, you know, being proactive okay. when defending. So this season, City will have to trust um, John Stones <laughs> and Nicolas Otamendi yeah. uh, to fill in that void. and. You know, great defend, great defenders they are in their own right, but Vincent Company was a step above, and that's something City will have to deal with. Yes, so for your top four, I'm, I'm guessing you're going to be having Manchester City in there, obviously, and maybe Liverpool in there. Which, which yes. other teams complete your top four? I think um, Tottenham have been very consistent over the last couple of okay. years in making the top four, and I don't see any reason why they should fall short this time, even though there continues to be concerns about their depth and okay. also the happiness of their manager, Mauricio Pochettino. So they will definitely be in the top four. The fourth place is a bit of a toss-up. Um, last season it was Chelsea, but okay. you know they've lost Maurizio Sarri now and they've got Frank Lampard, whose um, managerial now is not very... No one really knows what to expect from yeah. him. And there's also a transfer ban. Uh, United, same thing. We're not really sure what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer... But, but, but the girl, Iron Maguire. <laughs> and uh, there's Arsenal as well, who have bought really well and have continuity from last season, but still have some of the same weaknesses. So that fourth spot is a real, is a real toss-up. Who knows what might happen there? Well, I, I'm, I'm guessing you called up the top six, uh, but... Looking outside the top six, you have the likes of Everton, you have um, Leicester City, you have Wolverhampton Wanderers. Mm -hmm. Do you think these people are going to be cracking the top six this season? I think, I think there is a real chance that that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm a little bit wary of the entire top six concept because it's something that is a bit recent. Okay. But um, yeah, those are three teams that are on the cusp and have a really good chance of 
um, you know, barging their way in there. I would say of the three, probably the best place team would be Leicester. Leicester. Uh, Wolves did very well last season. They surprised a lot of people. They have a very good manager mm. and they have a culture and a playing style that's pretty much set. But um, they have the Europa League this season to contend with, yeah. which is going to sap a lot of resources. And there are still concerns over their depth, even though they address that in the transfer market a little bit this year. So I think Leicester are just very well placed. Brendan Rogers came in toward the end of last season and he has transformed the side. Yeah, we, we, saw, we saw an improvement in the, in, in the play of the absolutely. side. Absolutely. They, they are very front foot now. They know how to play with mm -hmm. the ball. Uh, they, they've acquired Yuri Tillemans permanently. And they're just a side that look really, really good and really focused, really trim. Uh, of the three, they are the side that have the biggest chance of crashing into that top six. If one of the um, other three teams, that's Chelsea, Manchester United, or Arsenal, underperform. Mm, okay, and now it, this takes me to the point of um, transfers, and um, probably you're going to be you're going to be giving us who you think has won the transfers. Uh, that's in the Premier League, uh, but but you look at the Everton side and how they've bought smartly. You would say uh, they lost Idrissa uh, Ganagre to PSG and they brought in Fabian Delph. They also brought in uh, Moisa Kin from um, Juventus. Do you think this, this, these players are going to be impacting the side immediately? I think Moisa Kin is a very interesting um, signing for Everton. They've, for so long, they've needed somebody up front who could score goals. Mm -hmm. uh, Carver Lewin is a great target man up front. He played toward the end of the season. He led the line, but his strengths come in engaging defenders and in getting the ball to stick up front, not really so much in scoring. That's where Moise Ken comes in and he will really, really improve um, that Everton side. The loss of Gay is a big one. Uh, they brought in Delph mm -hmm. and they've also brought in Jean-Philippe Bami. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah the, the Ivorian. But uh, I worry about them a little bit because um, neither really is a you know, perfect replacement for a Jusa Gay, much as it's difficult to replace a player of that profile, of course. Um, Jean-Philippe Bama is a more conservative defensive midfield player, mm -hmm. whereas Gay is, you know, he's an energizer bunny going all over the place, mm -hmm. trying to win the ball. How that affects their overall play will determine if, you know, it proves to be a master truck or, or not. Marco Silva will have to do a bit of adaptation in terms of his style and shape. 